What's going on there guys? Good evening. The Earthmaster here on the live stream with an update video on this beautiful Friday evening. It is April 29th, 2022, about 6.40 p.m. California time. Latest quake shows some movement out there in the Southern California region. Let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here on the USGS map as we zoom in to the West Coast. 2.1 showing up near Pinnacles right off the San Andreas Fault Zone, right off the slipping section. Creeping section, uh, slipping, creeping, one in the same, right? Uh, about 13 kilometer depth for that earthquake, kind of deep. So I'm kind of curious to see if they have reviewed it. This has not been reviewed. It's under an automatic status, which will probably be uh, determined once the uh, geologist looks at this uh, earthquake. It's pretty deep, like I said, I think that's a little error in that case. So yeah, latest earthquake right there, 2.1. I do want to zoom in here to an earthquake and it's in the red. Yes, see that? 2.8 in the red. The reason being is because the massive amount of felt, did you feel it, reports uh, created there on the USGS site and many people wondering what the shaking is out in Missouri. Near uh, Peerless Park, we had a uh, earthquake there earlier today, this afternoon, a 2.8 came in at almost eight kilometers below the surface there, just west of St. Louis. Quite a few folks did report feeling that earthquake there in the vicinity of the region. Looking at the Did You Feel It reports shows a wide array of reports there from light to moderate all over the place there in eastern Missouri, St. Louis, St. Charles, uh, Wildwood area, Washington, all getting in on that report there so a little bit of movement going on out there in the eastern part of missouri this is just outside of the new madrid zone uh, which sits down here to the southeast we'll go ahead and pull up the seismic hazard map and you can see here uh, this area right here is the uh, uh, new madrid seismic zone area in the red uh, there are some specific fault systems that do run to the north here and just to the north uh, west of this region so I'm kind of curious to see exactly what specific fault system uh, this took place on. Uh, so far, I haven't found out any specifics on it. USGS not showing anything here on the map far as the uh, plate bound or not plate boundary, but fault systems here in the area. And looking at the satellite view, we'll go ahead and zoom in real quick. I don't believe they have any fracking operations out here, but you never know. It does look like it's in a community of... Uh, uh, a highly densely populated area so i don't know if somebody's in their backyard out there drilling down let's see how far we can drill down into the center of the earth right 2.8 in the uh, peerless park area today so uh, if you did feel this earthquake or if you were in the vicinity of this earthquake didn't feel it felt it please let me know in this update video i'm kind of curious to see what it felt like out here along the west coast uh we can get a pretty good idea of what type of fault system earthquakes take place on just by the um, the the felt reports. You know what it felt like if it was a thrust quake, if you if it felt like a rolling motion or a vibration or a train, and so on. So let me know if you did feel that earthquake out there in Missouri today. Eastern part of the country pretty quiet. Aside from that, uh, some movement down here around the Pecos, 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 Texas. There we go. Did we get it right? Pecos, Texas. Beautiful area, right? Not not my type of environment. Sorry, I'm not really into the desert, but I'm sure there's some nice people out there. A couple earthquakes going on in the upper two range out there in western Texas today. Oklahoma and Kansas, all pretty quiet. Nebraska as well, some severe weather threats going on today uh, with tornado watches going on through Oklahoma and Kansas. And that will be included next week as well. Pacific Northwest, I find this rather odd because I think they're kind of stopped. They're, they're not reporting. And it's irritating because uh, I know there's earthquake activity going on. I haven't checked all the seismograph stations throughout the Pacific Northwest, but we do know one, and that is the Mount St. Helens station, definitely producing some uh, microquakes up there, and nothing at all being reported on the map here from the USGS, which is probably taking a three-day weekend. Who knows, right? They work hard. Uh, who knows? I might be working them, working for them someday, so I, I better be nice, right? Um, 2.5 in the northeastern part of California, out around Cedarville. Now, there is a lake out there. I don't know how full it is in the Surprise Valley area. Very deserty area out here once you get past the eastern part of the uh, 
of the Sierra Nevada mountains, the Warner Mountain area range, uh, get into that dry desert. And uh, got an earthquake out there, 2.5 at 2.1 kilometers, and also up here in the northwestern part of Nevada with a 1.4 at 3.9 kilometers. Uh, Northern California, uh, fairly quiet uh, until you get uh, pretty much about, uh, oh, I don't, I don't know, around Clear Lake, Reno. You can pretty much draw a line here southward. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, activity kind of ramping up here. Around the Bay Area, around Concord, we had a 2.7 near Pittsburgh, California. 18 kilometers. I'm kind of curious, right? 18 kilometers is super deep for this area. Automatic status review still. So nobody has reviewed it at all. Who knows if it even happened. L looking at the uh, Did You Fill It reports. Uh, looks like, uh, who do, uh, is that maybe, maybe a couple felt reports there. Very tiny little squares there around the Concord area showing that Did You Fill It reports. But uh, if that is indeed deep earthquake like that, 18 kilometer depth for that earthquake, we got a whole bunch of major movement going on out here then. We'll, we'll definitely keep an eye on these depths here. Depths tend to uh, give me an idea of what's about to happen or what could happen here. That's kind of what we look for in possibly seeing surface rupture. The deep earthquakes do play a major part in uh, possibly predicting uh, surface rupture quakes. Uh, eastern part of Sierra Nevada here, at least south of Lake Tahoe, looks fairly quiet. We do have some activity here south of Reno. Uh, around the Carson City area, Carson Range, some very shallow or uh, very small earthquakes, but fairly deep at about seven and nine kilometers into that area. Uh, there's that movement along the San Andreas Fault Zone. Long Valley Super Volcano up here looks fairly quiet, just two microquakes in that region and some activity around the Ridgecrest area. Southern California, uh, still seeing that little swarming confined up here around the. Uh, San Jacinto Fault area near Hemet, just west of the San Jacinto Fault or the uh, mountain range here, getting in on a little bit of that swarming activity. What else we got? Some movement up here in Alaska as well taking place with a uh, couple fours, a couple twos, and some microquakes scattered out and about the land. One earthquake way, way up into the northern part of Alaska, a 2.4 near this town alaska <laughs> i'm not even going to i'm tired of uh, mispronouncing names because i get slaughtered left and right but uh, you know what uh, I'm, I'm i'm here learning as well just like everyone else when it comes to certain things 33 kilometer depth there for that 2.4 up there in northern alaska uh, seeing a trail of activity here it's a microquakes along the aleutian trench and the uh, activity over here along the northwestern part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, we got 4.2 uh, in the Russia area at 187 kilometers. This earthquake occurring earlier this afternoon. It's a pretty deep earthquake here, and it's in the region where I'm watching. I think out of all the zones right now, uh, in terms of realistically speaking of the next large earthquake, uh, it's the Kuro-Kamachaka Trench. So... Uh, Got to watch that area pretty close when we're looking at those deeper movements. Uh, a little bit of activity outside of Japan and the Philippine Plate. The Mariana Trench seen a pretty deep earthquake earlier this morning, a 4.3 at 250 kilometers. We have seen a noticeable increase in movement along the Indonesia Islands area and also around the Fiji and the Tonga region where we're looking at uh, some deep movement around ban uh, Vanuatu with a 4.6. These five-pointers, though, uh, this afternoon relatively shallow between 10 and 62 kilometers uh, some activity lighten up here on the big island of hawaii which i just heard uh, coming into uh, the cb radio here just within the last hour getting some uh, pretty good dx conditions going on uh, from the west coast down to the uh, uh, big island here dx uh, basically that's uh, skip skip conditions there on the cb radio also ham radio i'm sure in the 28 uh Frequency band is picking that up. So a little bit of activity here. Southeast flank region showing some movement here, including a 2.2 within the last hour. 32 kilometer depth for that earthquake. Uh, let's see what else we got floating around the bend here. We got uh, one earthquake out here in the Prince Edward Islands area. A 
4.9. Haven't seen too much movement down here south of South Africa. Uh, let's check out the last seven days of activity. In fact, that's the only earthquake. So kind of an oddball quake out there in the region. But it does, uh, I guess it does take place in Southwest Indian Ridge. A little bit of adjustment going on. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, yeah, just kind of lighten up. You see all the red circles there on the globe? Or at least on the map, folks, looking uh, pretty active. Visually looking at this map here, we've seen a noticeable increase throughout the Pacific Plate uh, in general, including this 5.6 earlier earlier this morning here. So uh, definitely some movement and adjustment taking place here in the Pacific. Uh, Yellowstone activity, not a whole lot to report out here, folks. I'm not seeing any major movement. Someone, uh, I'm not even going to mention it. <laughs> not even going to mention it here. Not worthy of it. Just make sure you guys, if you're reading reports out there on the internet, to verify with the seismographs. If you see something showing up, uh, say for example, someone says, yeah, there's a, a seven pointer at Yellowstone. Guys, look at it. It's gonna blow. Well, I, if I were you, I wouldn't take their word for it. I would go and check out the raw data. The raw data are the seismographs themselves. And um, a seven pointer, a five pointer, a four pointer even for that matter, would be showing up all across Yellowstone National Park. That is a given. But nothing going on. We're not looking at any major swarms, any uh, doom and gloom. It's going to be a nice weekend. No need to damper the uh, happiness, right? PNSN, what's going on up there? The Trimber map here tonight. 49 epicenters into the northern, uh, actually southern Oregon area. Um, definitely confined there to that region. After, what, two days of lacking activity? Just double check that and verify. Yep, zero epicenters over the last two days. So it looks like, uh, I guess that's right. I mean, I don't have any way to monitor the raw data in this case, but uh, hopefully these folks are being transparent and honest. Mount St. Helens activity. As we zoom in here to the seismographs, we know for a fact there's some earthquake activity occurring because we see it. The last reported earthquake activity here from these folks here on the 28th one earthquake yesterday let's go ahead and check out the raw data to verify that here at the summit the dome and uh, wow look at that earthquake right here at mount st helens that's a pretty sizable one that may be above the 1.0 threshold and some other smaller quakes here within the last hour i've been trying to access the mount st helens uh live seismograph stations on my earthquake uh 3d stream my, my my life size seismographs but uh can't access it for whatever reason looking at the last uh 24 hours 30 hours of activity here definitely shows some movement got to remember all these earthquakes here on the black and yeah, blue lines red lines all microquakes uh that one may be a 0.9 um but man look at that there's definitely a lot of earthquake activity occurring there at mount st helens all microquakes but again Zip zero nada being reported by the PNSN network or the USGS network. So, and EMSC, we definitely it's not even worth the bo bother because they don't. I don't know. I don't think they monitor this type of activity uh, in the microquake department. Let's go ahead and check out the EMSC models and see what we got going on here uh, across the. Flat scale map once again, all kind of verified with the USGS uh, USGS uh, quakes. Looks about the same. A little bit more movement here around the Indonesia area than the USGS is showing, but uh, definitely uh, noticeable activity around the Pacific Plate. A little bit of uptick. Looking at uh, the states here from the EMSC model, as we zoom in here to the. Uh, Pacific Northwest, and there's not a whole lot here being reported into the area. Just those two quakes, those little microquakes on the USGS side. Nothing really going on throughout the Pacific Northwest. Or the Vancouver Island ranges. Let's go ahead and check out Earthquakes Canada on the map here and see what uh, see what's showing up. We've got a little activity here in Ottawa area. I've got a 3.0. Uh, 18 kilometer depth there for that earthquake. Actually, in the uh, Quebec area, it looks like. Aside from that, uh, latest quake shows some movement here along the eastern part of the country. 
Uh, actually, this is a main, a 1.5. That one occurring uh, early this morning there, it looks like. Five kilometer depth there. I don't believe USGS is showing that activity in Maine. Let's go ahead and check that out. Let's just, let's just verify. Yeah, nothing showing up here on the all magnitude. So a little bit on the odd side. Uh, aside from that, not a whole lot going on along the western part of the country up here in, in Canada. Solar weather activity has been uh, somewhat active. Let's go ahead and zoom in here to the solar weather department. And looking at a uh, couple flares kicking off here. A couple over the last 24 hours in the M category. It looks like M1.1 or so. Not updating here on the map. Looks like we just had another uh, C flare. So we're getting a little active, right? But none of this, I believe, is coming from anything that is Earth side uh, facing. In fact, this activity right here on the map and also on the uh, the charts there looks like it's all going on from that massive sunspot that was facing Earth, but which is now that's a flare. Obviously, that's a flare, but it's on the far side, almost the far side of the sun, and uh, facing away from Earth. So those sunspots were ginormous, right? Remember, they're facing Earth for a couple days here, almost a week, hardly provided any activity, and then as soon as they face away from the Earth, they start sparking. So uh, we'll see what it goes. We've got a little bit of a global delay or absorption uh, blackouts here on the radio frequencies. It looks like uh, south of Australia up into the northern areas of the higher latitudes as well. Uh, I don't think we've reached our, or our G1 class storm as predicted. Yes, we did a couple nights ago, but they were kind of forecasting it for tonight or last night. And uh, tonight as well, but we never reached that. So the forecast has been kind of off in terms of uh, predicting these solar um, storms. So it is what it is. Uh, we'll see how this um, plays out in the coming days and weeks and years as we advance towards the solar maximum here in 2025, roughly in the summer of 2025. It's only a couple years away. All right, guys, have a good night. Uh, we were going to do an update, uh, or as far as uh, the question and answer show tonight, Missy Mimi's is uh, busy at the moment, which she is uh, definitely entitled to do. So we're going to do that tomorrow night uh, for the question and answer show. But uh, by the way, uh, if you guys are wondering who is on the other side of the microphone, right? I mean, a lot of people don't know what we look like. I mean, I, who knows? You know, what do uh, what does my voice sound like? Does my voice match my picture? Does my voice match someone that you might know? What about Missy Mimi's? It's hard to say, right? I'm in the same situation when I uh, watch videos and I can't see the person behind the mic. Yes, we could obviously add a green screen and uh, a visualization while we're doing the update. And it's very possible we're going to do that here pretty soon as we approach that uh, 75,000, 100,000. Uh, 100, 100k subscriber area we may add on that option for uh some live uh video of us while we're doing the update but uh, if you're kind of curious to see what we look like i did add it on the facebook the Earthmaster facebook page and also twitter uh you know what i'll add it here on youtube as well i know a lot of people don't use facebook a lot of people don't use twitter so here on youtube since you are right here on youtube I'm going to go ahead and add that onto the story or uh, a post as well onto my uh, page. So anyway, guys, have a good night. Stay safe out there. I think things are starting to get a little bit active. It doesn't look like it's calming down. Looking at the globe here, it looks like some wide scale uh, movement taking place and adjustment coming here really soon. We'll chat you guys later. Have a good night, everyone.